drinking, drinking, drinking all my problems. I don't need nobody. I just need my bottle. That's for certain. Uh, put the pussy on a pedestal. I don't got no industry friends cause I'm rude. So I told myself, pray every day. Say your grace player. Keep the hater. Keep the demons away from you. Uh, it's that good, good gold link. Keep the haters. Keep the demons away from you. Right when we get stacks, old hating ass up out of here, here come Claude. And even though we as watchers of the show ain't really posed to be rooting for Remy, I ain't feeling Claude's snaky ass. Not one bit. We're going to get into all of that. In the meantime, let's get the recap. First of all, I am your humble and most gracious host, Real. Here to talk about that good, good BMF, Black Mafia Family Series, Season 3, Episode 6, entitled Casualties of War. And this episode is brought to you by that good, good Jack Daniels and Coke, Diet Coke, because I'm old. You know what I'm saying? Old school. Let's just get down to brass tacks, shall we? We start off with a gang of funerals. Why? Because Cats was getting laid down last episode. I mean, bodies was dropping. And getting dropped off at the gravesite where we begin this episode. Funeral is happening for little Milton down in the A. Meat shows up to offer condolences. Remy ain't trying to hear. It's a quick non-conversation. Meech pieces up out of there. Remy tells Claude it's on site with BMF from this point on. Now back in the D, a funeral is happening for my man Diesel. Funeral also happening for Lil' Kevin, where Bryant stands heavy-hearted, consoled by his ex-partner, his ex-lover, his everything right now, Detective Jen. <laughs> now these funerals just happen to be happening at the same time in the D, in the same graveyard, in the same vicinity. Brian sees the funeral for Diesel happening, sees BMF, his sworn enemy, goes over to Diesel's gathering, disrespects the proceedings, says little Kevin shouldn't be in the grave, and that it should be all or one a BMF. Pushes T in Diesel damn grave hole. <laughs> Pushes T in the damn open grave. Shit is crazy. Hands get to gripping guns. You know, basically all of BMF versus Detective Jen. Cooler heads prevail. And they all piece up out of there. Over at Duffy's, they having some words for Rip. You know, giving him a, a final send-off, their own send-off. You know, Rip got laid down last episode in the, in the war at Techwood. Meech tells his crew to come by his crib later, you know, for some more fellowship, for the repass and a movie. Duffy hollers at Meech on the side. Meech tells him he went down to Techwood Funeral for Milton. Says he can see that Remy don't want to be king. But his number two does, Claude. Says he can see their way into the Techwood organization by getting Claude to get Remy on board. Then they can partner up, get rid of the MKs. Then take Remy out later. From the inside. 
Sound like a plan? Meech come home from Duffy's. Neighbor run up on him. Older lady. Asks him if he knows how to use a lawnmower. <laughs> I mean, weeds is everywhere out that piece. Tells him the HOA has rules around grass height. Basically telling him that grass of his, he needs to cut it. Your grass is way too high. You need to cut it. <laughs> Just pressing me. He like, well, does the HOA have a height requirement for all the cats that's running up and in your house while your man ain't home? Running up in between them thighs, in between your sheets. Hey girl, ain't no mystery. At least, as far as I can see. <laughs> she took the damn hint, pieced up out of there. At some point, she does come back around knocking on the door. Tells Meech he got 30 days to pay the HOA fee and get that place up to snuff or they're going to put a lien on his spot. He basically tells her what she can do with her HOA. Burns her little paper up right in her face. But let me back up a sec. So after the first interaction with the neighbor, at some point, the crew comes over and they do have fellowship, getting a little eat on. Now, Meech is concerned because Laz not there with the crew. They thinking maybe the Red Dogs got him. You know, after Techwood, they might be cracking down. Red Dogs or not, they on that f the world talk. It's about us, that B, to the M, to the mother F. Talking, let's tighten up our ship, our crew, who we let up in, how we get that money, and live every day like it's our last. Sound like good shit to me. At some point, Meech connects with T, hollers at his bro for a minute. T concerned that if war keeps up, Nobody will rock with him. Now, Meech disagrees. Gives T a little advice on how to handle his folk, how to lead. T hangs up with Meech. Gets a little rap with Lawanda. Tells her he needs to dead this beef with Henry. Before he end up a memory. Done seen one funeral too many as of recent. I guess Brian pushing him in that grave <laughs> had him physically feeling that that hole ain't where he want to be. T sound, T sound a little shook. You know, bodies was dropping for real. And BMF whole deal has always been less bodies, more business. Now them bodies is piling up a little. Lawanda ain't got no problem with that. And if she did, she ain't say it. Eventually, T heads down to Henry spot, you know, where the gambling happens. Now, that man Diz up in the joint, gambling, looking crazy, you know, on some I spy shit. Just looking like some shit was wrong, though, like his his cool was not kept and it didn't go unnoticed. T tells Henry he wants to set things right. Says too many people are dying up in these streets. Offers her product at a special, special discount. Henrietta ain't feeling what he talking. Because you know she with all the sh Calls him a renegger. You know, because he reneged on their first deal. Called them a clown. Says they can't be friends, associates, nothing. Let's him know she planned to take BMF ass 
out for clarity's sake. Peace up out of there, T does. No better off in dead in a war than he was before he went in. At some point later, him and Marquisha up at the crib getting a nap <laughs> before they get that rap. He having dreams of Marquisha getting shot while riding him. <laughs> I mean, he thinking about some ass and some and some death. They get to talking about his beef with Henrietta. She tells T all she know about Henry. You know, Marquisha knows some, some shit. She knows some shit about some shit. You know, you don't marry a hustler and not know some shit. Not be a part of some shit. Not over here or be privy to some shit. Y'all get the point. Tells T that Henrietta, a second generation drug dealer with daddy issues, tells T who her pops is Says he got connections and got Henry by the collar. Marquisha tells him to go over her head. And go over her head he does. At some point he goes down to talk to Blaze. Tells him he trying to dead the beef with Henrietta. Wants to give them a steep, steep discount on some weight. But she ain't trying to hear it. Blaze tells him he knows all about BMF, appreciates their business plan. But with the politics he got going on internally, might not be nothing he can do about that. He'll see no promises. At some point, Blaze gets that rap with Henrietta at what looks like a political event. And he does talk to her about the chat he and T had. Tells Henrietta to take the deal. Tells her the only reason he didn't tell T yes is out of respect for her. Respect he wishes she would show in return. More so just a sense of courtesy. She ain't feeling it. He asking why she can't be like he raised her to be. She asked him why he can't dig who she actually is. You've seen this story before. Maybe you haven't. I may not be the kid you want, but I'm the kid you got. Henrietta, a special type, too. <laughs> you know, all her life, she's been singing that same song to her pops. You know the one. Love me in a special way. What more can I say? Love me now, damn it. He tells her if that deal ain't taken, their deal may be over. He pieces up out of there. She ain't paying her pops no mind. Her cousin Tyson asked her if she peeped how T and Diz were looking at each other earlier. You know, when, they, when he came by the spot. You can already tell there ain't going to be no peace between these two organizations. Meanwhile, back in the A, what Meech peeped in regard to the dynamics in the Techwood organization was on point. Right and exact. While the details at this time are unbeknownst to Meech and team, Claude ain't happy with the way things are moving. Steps to Remy back in Techwood. Claude drinking that BMF Kool-Aid. He feeling what Meech was putting down. Knowing it's going to be a hard way to go against the MKs by themselves. Now, Remy know what time it is. Although it might seem like what Claude talking about is the best way to move. Remy know BMF and Techwood, they can't never be allies. It's too much old, bad blood. 
told Claude they got a death to avenge. But see, Claude ain't thinking about all of that. He want better weight, better weapon, something different. He ain't seeing that big picture. Remy tells him if we go with BMF, that's a guaranteed bullet to the head, player. And if you got a better plan, speak now or forever hold your mother peace. Young Scrappy. <laughs> Claude don't got a better plan, so he don't speak. It's a little snarky up in there. You know, it's a little grumpy. <laughs> a little heated up in that piece. On the other side of town, Meech, Tina, and Duffy out and about somewhere later that evening. You know, probably headed to look at some ass at the Platinum Palace. <laughs> you know, like, that's the only spot in town. But it's the happening spot, I guess, so that's where they at. Looking like they about to go and enjoy the night. Tina and Meech in the bins, following Duffy. A little bit distance behind his whip, but, you know, they together. Red dogs run up on Duffy at a stop sign. Meech and Tina fall back. Watch the red dogs get to him and Duffy up. Asking him what went down in Techwood. Red dogs look up, see Meech and Tina. Sick the dog on him. <laughs> you know, this is Georgia. But not before they piece up out of there. Now, Duffy doesn't make it back that night. A little bit of time goes by. Meech gets a little worried. Duffy and Laz ain't been released yet. And Meech now seeing how his crew dynamics are modified a little. Angel like, yeah, and Greeny been MIA also. You know, we ain't seen Greeny in a few episodes. Angel offers the ear hustle down at the club. You know how clients be knowing shit. At some point, Meech is moving about, coming out of diner. That Claude coming in appears Claude been following Meech. Wants to talk to Meech one on one. Meech hangs back. Claude wants to know Meech's plan to work with his crew. Meech tells him they're going to be partners, not competition. Meets tells Claude if he can make this happen, his slate is clean. All the dumb shit they had beef about, water under the bridge. But Remy gots to go. Then Claude verbalized some filth that made my balls itch. Told Meech how Remy took care of him when he was younger. Said they were like brothers. Said Remy wanted him to avoid this life. Then he tells Meech Remy ass is out of here. And that he would talk to some cats who can get it done. That mother is usually the ones closest to you. F an enemy. You can see them coming. Pray every day. Say your grace. Play your keep the haters. Keep the demons away from me. Often them haters are closer than you think, old snaky ass. I hope he meet the same fate as Stax, shot up from his twat up. Meech like hell if you feel like that. Other ATL crews must also. You know that Remy gots to go. Get at him. Tell him what's on the table. Holler back. Now BMF mainly can move like this because they got the best product on them screens. Claude know it and Meech know it. On the other side of town, Angel up in the Platinum Palace, working day and night like Michael Jackson to find that info out. <laughs> she working this old cat. Hopped on pop in a private room. She pouring some old Miller High Life on her ass, on her own ass. Talking about drinks on me. <laughs> old 
player tells her Red Dogs is on the loose. Says Greeny got picked up by Georgia Bureau of Investigation. She pulling out all the stops to find out as much as she can. Puts him inside her love. <laughs> like Minnie Ripperton. Do you want to ride inside my love? <laughs> she put him inside. Found out what she needed. Clenched it up. Made him bust. Hopped off pop. Got her cash and pieced up out of there with the illest of ill-gotten gains still up inside. <laughs> Angel come back to the crib at some point. Duffy back, busted the f*** up. She comes in and tells them Greeny got arrested. And that he implicated Meech on shooting Big Mike from last season. Says a grand jury is being put together and that Georgia Bureau of Investigations is looking for him, point blank. All of a sudden, lads come in, doubling down on the fact that Meech is is up in the game. Say they pressing him to rat on Meech. Duffy tells Meech the obvious <laughs> that he need to lay his ass low. So lay low cause you might be bruised. Top story on the evening news. I ain't for games. So if you want to play, I'm laying low. Lay down on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him he need to lay low. Meech gathered a crew. Tell him he going to St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> Meech ready to piece the f*** up out of there. <laughs> Tells them operations going to stay fluid. But they need to do their part. Tina got access to Ty's lawyers. So if they get hemmed up, they need to hit them lawyers up. Angel asks if she can go with Meech. He tells her he feeling her and all that. But he ain't Teddy Pendergrass. This ain't a come on and go with me situation. <laughs> Wasn't trying to holler that good old Come on over to my place It would be so nice, would be so good Yeah This ain't that Sorry baby, I can't take you She tells him, okay, well don't be surprised If I get easy like Sunday morning out this bitch And move on by the time you get back, player I know it sounds funny, but I just can't stand the pain. Yeah. Meech, I'm leaving you tomorrow. <laughs> Seems to me, man, you know I done all I can. You see, I beg, stole, and I borrowed. Yeah. That's why I'm easy. Uh, I'm easy like Sunday morning. <laughs> All the old players holler. <laughs> she like, I hear Glock pays well. Now, I know her little feelings were hurt. You know, she might have wanted to save some face in the moment. He like, you know what? You out the trust circle. <laughs> he like, here's the line. Here's me. And here's you. 
Bitch, you somewhere all the way over in Alaska. You out. In fact, you can get to stepping right now. Find you a new spot and everything. Did you hear Glock had a new spot too? Since you know so much shit, since you since you hearing so much shit, That didn't end well for Angel. Now, back in the day, Lucille up in the kitchen cooking a little breakfast, you know. She got some shit cooking. Her and Charles getting a little comfy moment at the stove, you know. It's a little warmness. It's a little closeness being had, grinning, snickering. Nikki come in, see all of that. She like, y'all getting back together? Lucille like, nah. Your daddy just saying good morning. <laughs> Charles walked away like, God damn it. <laughs> Nikki leave up out of there. Charles like, hey, I thought I thought things were going OK. Last time that I checked. It was no smut on my rap. <laughs> it was two chains on my neck. <laughs> he like, last time that I checked, we was good up in them sheets. Damn it, I done wrote a song and all of that woman. <laughs> Lucille ignoring Charles' ass. Says he working on fixing his family. And there's a reason she chose him over the good doctor years ago. He pieces up out of there, confident with himself, you know. A little later in the evening, Lucille and Nikki having a little tense moment. Mama trying to get Nikki to take them birth control pills. You know, she back on her sh**. Nikki like, I'm not even having sex. Nikki hit her with some young smart mouth she like, you need him more than me. Dr. Feelgood been calling a lot lately. <laughs> now, you know, if you as old as I am, your mama would have snatched that ass up. And that's just what Lucille did. She snatched that little ass up, told her to watch her mouth, gave her a chance to say whatever she wanted to say, which was that she wasn't having sex. You know, she been saying. Lucille tells her she doesn't want her to end up stuck like she was. This is not a feel-good moment for anyone after she says that sh**. Nikki like, I'm not going to end up like that. Lucille tells her to take the pills anyway. She pees up out of there. At some point gets ready for a dinner date with Dr. Feelgood. That's an odd ass moment. I know some of y'all done seen it before. Charles is trying to be supportive and understand him. I mean, hell, he had his fun. He like, I'm going to give you your space to do what you need to do. You know, figure your shit out. So he does. And so she does. Lucille goes on her date with the doctor. They get to dancing, kissing. All of a sudden... Dr. Maurice's phone start buzzing. Now, at the same time, T is also on a date with Markeisha. Some might say T and Mama both in places they shouldn't be tonight right now. But in the end, they both wind up in the same spot. <laughs> Go figure. Markeisha talking that her and T should plan a romantic vacation soon. He like, maybe later, my baby mom about to drop my second child and I need to chill for a little bit. <laughs> Some trifling. But, you know, maybe after the baby get about two or three months. <laughs> we might be able to swing that. Markeisha face went flat as f
Now Marquisha thinking they ass about to go to some fancy restaurant. T take Marquisha to his spot. His restaurant. Guess she hadn't seen it yet. She like, I thought we were going to go someplace nice to eat. She batting 0-2 oh tonight. And it's looking like the bottom of the eighth, too. She getting in, turn off his phone and his beeper. She like, look, if the night going to be funky as it already is, I'm going to minimize the funkiness. Ain't going to be no interruptions. Turned all his shit. Call came through on the landline in the restaurant. <laughs> the cook tells T, your baby mama in labor at your folks, player. Marquisha sitting right there. <laughs> Everybody in that place was looking silly. T get the dipping the hell up out of there. Marquisha like, what, no ride? You going to leave me here to fend for myself on a ride home? T like, man, I got to bounce. Joe, take care of her. Which basically means take her to wherever she want to go. Now that same call around the same time went to the good doctor while he was on his date with Lucille. That was Nikki on his beeper. She like, I found your card on my mom's nightstand. <laughs> We need your help. <laughs> LaWanda in the background moaning and groaning. It's almost like Nikki got a little get back. You know, like she found a card on her mom's nightstand. Why the card on the nightstand? Anyway, Lucille and the doctor get to the house. Nikki like 911 was late and no neighbors were around. So I had to call who I had to call. Doctor gets to delivering the baby. Charles walk in like, what the hell? Like he see the man who trying to take his woman away right now is in his living room. She was hella uncomfortable to watch. T come in after the baby was delivered. Come over to LaWanda. She like, back the f away from me. I know who you was just with. Your cook told me all the details, and you smell like old heifer. <laughs> Boy, bye. Conversation get a little heated between T and LaWanda. The good doctor like, hey, calm down, son. Charles take T outside. On the way out, informs the doctor that T ain't his goddamn son. <laughs> In case he didn't know. Nikki saw that baby being delivered. She ran upstairs and took the sh out of them birth control pills. <laughs> she didn't need no water or nothing. Meanwhile, on the other side of the law, Jen and Brian back up in the precinct. Brian won him a little payback. Who the hell wouldn't? Jen ain't trying to run him in. She done already lost one close associate last episode. And while Brian ain't exactly Boy Scout material, she did give him some ass. <laughs> she like, we gonna get that payback. Hold tight, player. Captain comes in. Grills them about the shooting at Jen's house. Asks them how a quiet night at home ends up with an officer dead. They both say nothing. Captain like Brian. You continue to tell lie after lie and you don't cooperate with us. Your suspension is over, player. Your termination is effective immediately. Bryant, peace up out of there. Jen comes clean with the captain. Tells him her and Amberson found that BMF is beefing with another drug organization that Brian is now moonlighting for. Captain thanks Jen for her honesty. Then tells her ass her suspension is effective immediately. Meanwhile, Brian ain't waiting on that payback. And at this point, he ain't got shit to lose. Anger in his heart. Death on his mind. 
Roll up in Henrietta spot. Knocking everybody the f*** down. Till he get up to the chief. Finds her in her room. Pulls out the cannon. Before he could let it blow. Realizes that there's more people in the room. Then let on initially when he rolled up in there. Blaze pulls his piece out. Puts it to Bryant's head. Tells him to stand down. Bryant does. Henrietta ain't the least bit bothered. Even egged his ass on while he had the piece pointed at her. Next time we see Brian, he wake up sometime later. You know, they probably cold cocked him in the back of his head, put him out, dropped his ass off on some concrete lot with his guns next to him. You know, showed him some respect. They didn't kill him. They got him the f*** up out of there, though. We exit this fine episode here with Diz out with his people, chilling in a parking lot somewhere. His crew just leaving. But that good, good Donny Hathaway piano riff is just starting. Henrietta roll up on Diz. She ain't run up on him. She ain't sneak up on him. She just hollered out his name. Walked up on him. Lit his ass up with a blowtorch. Looking like the drug lord villain we didn't know we needed. Like something out of the Joker meets the wire. Henrietta was in full character with them clock glasses. <laughs> Henrietta was hungry. Looked like fried bird was on the menu. 